Hello guys, welcome back to another video by my Kaya Pass YouTube channel. Uh, I'm JP, together with me is Chunping. So today we'll come up with a more, I would say, different kind of uh, perspective, which is to be bearish on a certain kind of company today. So today's uh, company in focus would be uh, Busan Malaysia, which is the company that uh, regulates and manages the Malaysian stock exchange. So just to give a bit of context, I actually invested into Busan Malaysia stock uh, I think close to four years plus, so before the pandemic. So during the pandemic, I saw the prices went up. I also got to enjoy the uh, very lucrative uh, dividend payout due to the high frequency trading of growth stocks. And uh, that actually gave me a 9% dividend yield. But coming as of the, the recent uh, periods, uh, I've actually reanalyzed everything and I actually chose to uh, sell off my investments in Busan stock. So as of today, as of this video, uh, I'm no longer a Busan Malaysia shareholder and I'll go through with you uh, my thought process and hopefully you can actually learn something from it. And of course, if you don't agree with it, you can let me know in the comment section below as well. So I think we can proceed. Right, of course, uh, this kind of video would warrant me a, a disclaimer. This is just my personal opinion. It's not Chumbing's opinion. Neither it should be your opinion or your decision to follow suit to whatever I'm doing. Whatever I'm sharing here is just my personal opinion. Does not construe you to make any buy, hold, or sell decisions, okay? So do your own diligence before you uh, further make any decisions. So let's talk a little bit more about this company, Pusa Malaysia Berhad. Right. So Busan Malaysia Bahad, it's a company that, as I mentioned just now, uh, is involved in the securities market of Malaysia. So uh, to give you a brief snapshot, uh, basically uh, whatever companies' shares are listed on Busa, whenever there is a buy or sell transaction, right, be it through whatever broker that you're using, there's usually some sort of a trading and clearing fee that Busa will earn, right? Doesn't matter uh, if you buy or sell. So, and doesn't matter whichever brokerage you use, the money or the trading fees or the uh, clearing fees will actually, a portion of it will actually go to Busan Malaysia. So, of course, he, on top of securities, there's also other, uh, you know, products uh, and, and derivatives that is uh, governed by Busan Malaysia. So, you have warrants, like your call warrants, uh, your put warrants, your company warrants. You also have ETFs and there's also staple securities and also other, other types of uh, financial products that fall under Busan Malaysia's jurisdiction and also regulation, right? Whenever there's a buy or sell on these products, Busan Malaysia earns a fee. And of course, being securities uh, not much more familiar to most of us, uh, there's also another strong uh, segment of products, which is the derivatives market. It can be your uh, crude palm oil, uh, derivatives, it can also be uh, some certain products listed in the Islamic markets. So uh, all in all, and also we don't forget uh, also the bond listings and other support listings that is also uh, being uh, regulated and managed by Busan Malaysia. So if you look at uh, Busan Malaysia's historical financial, you can see that uh, it has been a stably growing uh, company in terms of its top line. Right? So even ever since 2012 until 2021, you can see that there is a huge spike in terms of the top line in 2020 and 2021 due to the uh, uh, increased frequency of the glove stock trading. So that actually helps to uh, bolster and see Busan Malaysia's top line go to uh, above average kind of levels uh, record. Right? But if you just neglect whatever they have achieved in 2020 and 2021, you can see that actually it has been on a stable increase. Not to say very fantastic, but at least there is a little bit of growth. Uh, the profit, net profit also tags along with it. So under such circumstances, you might be really uh, curious and ask me, well, it's still growing, JP. Why are you actually choosing to divesting it off? That doesn't holding on to it, even though it's a slow growth company and uh, it's still paying dividends. Uh, does that actually make sense for you to continue holding? onto Busan Malaysia. So let's jump into the next slide. If you look at to the uh, dividends per share payout, it's also stably increasing. Uh, there are some periods of time where the company choose to pay out a little less than what they used to pay. But uh, on an average, I would say that the dividends payout per share would be around uh, close to around 30 cents, right? If you take an average of uh, past 10 years. In the year of 2020, 2021, there was the bumper dividends payout due to a better uh, trading frequency of uh, securities. So that's why you see a uh, payout 51 uh, cents per dividend 
per share and also 41 cents uh, in 2021. So again, you will come back and say, JP, this is a company that can have the ability to increase the dividends payout. Why are you actually selling off the company? All right. So my own personal thoughts and opinion really drive down to one key important aspect of Busan Malaysia, which is how much volume and attention uh, the securities and stocks uh, is actually uh, portrayed by the uh, turnover volume. So we can see right here, basically this graph is actually giving you a sense of how many shares are actually being traded on Busan Malaysia up to the year of 2012 until 2022. Right. So along the years, you can see that uh, trading volume has slowly increased. So that actually jives with the slowly increased revenue and profit of Busan Malaysia. Come fiscal year 2020 and 2021, due to the increased trade frequency of the growth stocks, that also helped to push up the revenue and profit and then the dividends pay up of Busan Malaysia. But come into 2022, after the pandemic is you know almost over, uh, you see that uh, revenue volatility growth also have normalized down for Busan Malaysia and also that will impact the dividends payout as well. So it has come back to close to what the trading levels of volumes that Busan Malaysia experienced back in the past uh, eight years before the uh, pandemic frequency, high frequency trading uh, kind of volume. So your questions or my questions to, my, to myself would be that, are you actually happy that the volume goes back to normalized periods of time or do you expect to see uh, Busan Malaysia's trading volume go up higher and higher, regardless of the uh, one-off kind of uh, capitalist that they have encountered. So due to that fact, uh, I reallocated my thoughts and think that, yep, maybe probably uh, putting my attention into other companies that can consistently grow their top line, uh, does not rely on any one-off catalyst to grow their company's performances, uh, might actually be uh, what I am looking at to define what is a uh, good or great dividend paying company. So another revenue that Busan Malaysia or stock exchanges around the world earn is actually through the listing fees, right? So whenever you see, come across uh, certain companies when they are trying to list their company, uh, you actually uh, raise money or raise capital from the public. So the capital can be used for R&D, uh, can be used to expand, but there's also a portion of it where they actually actually uh, spell it out that, oh, this is going to be used for listing fees and listing expenses. So uh, there will also be a portion of it. So how much companies choose to list on Busan Malaysia will also help to improve Busan Malaysia's one-off revenue. So this is the one-off revenue that Busan Malaysia can actually earn if more companies choose to list their shares onto Busan Malaysia. So let's take a look at the, uh, I would say, two uh, greatest uh, or, or two upcoming tech companies that have been, I would say, uh, considered as Malaysia homegrown companies, but at the end, uh, chose to list their shares outside of Busan Malaysia. So you have uh, Kasem, uh, which is a business revolved around uh, the used car, uh, selling and uh, buying and selling used cars. And also you have Grab, which is uh, on to the uh, last mile delivery and also uh, mobility uh, kind of business. So these two companies uh, started off as a Malaysia uh, owned and, 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 and grown companies. Grab chose to change their uh, home ground to Singapore. But at the end of the day, you can see that both companies are actually not listing their shares in either Malaysia or Singapore. They chose to list it into the US stock exchange. And if this kind of scenario were to continue, will there be upcoming exciting companies in the tech scene that will list onto Busan Malaysia and encourage people to trade on Busan Malaysia? So this is a question that you need to ask yourself. And for me, uh, the answer was a bit uh, disappointing that I won't think that any tech companies in the likes of uh, the future grab or the future custom might want to choose an IPO their shares on the Malaysia Stock Exchange. So if that is the case, you won't have any exciting companies and you will not uh, attract interest in trading and then your turnover volume on a daily basis will drop and that means that your company cannot grow sustainably or steadily in the coming years. So what else to do is that when I compare Busan Malaysia Bahad with Singapore Exchange, you can see that uh, Singapore Exchange, even though it's a smaller exchange uh, compared to Malaysia in terms of uh, country size, but there are much more products listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange and you can see that the revenue is actually much more higher than uh, your Busan Malaysia. So there are more companies listed in 
sector, Malaysia Stock Exchange compared to Singapore Stock Exchange. But why Singapore Exchange can actually pull in much more revenue compared to the Malaysia Stock Exchange or Busan Malaysia. So this is something you need to take note of. You have more companies listed, but you don't actually attract trading volumes and uh, turnover volumes. And if you look at the return on equity, at least for the Singapore Stock Exchange or Singapore uh, SGX, the return on equity has been quite uh, steady in the sense that it hovers around 35% each. Well, so Busan Malaysia, prior to the pandemic, one off gain that actually boosted their ROE to uh, 45%. Uh, previously, it has always been around 25% only. So from that point of view, you can already see that Singapore action is actually much more efficient in generating returns to shareholders compared to Busan Malaysia, which actually uh, over past Singapore exchange due to the one-off uh, trading profits. So another uh, thing that you need to consider and you look, look at the big picture is that how different different exchanges around the world attract companies to list on their exchange. And when you list on their exchange, only you can attract uh, shareholders to trade on your markets. So for Singapore, they have actually done a good job in terms of attracting uh, REITs all around the world to choose to IPO on the Singapore exchange. So you have the latest one, uh, which is the digital core REIT, uh, a data center REIT that is actually uh, listed on the Singapore exchange. And then uh, for electric car maker NIO, even though it's a China-based uh, car maker, electric vehicle maker, uh, they actually chose to list their third listing in the Singapore stock exchange market. So if this kind of scenario were to continue to happen, uh, Singapore exchange can actually continue to attract uh, you know, tech companies to come in and uh, list onto the exchange as a secondary or third listing, and that can actually help to uh, increase the trading volume and then the clearing and trading fees that it can actually accept from that. So due to that, I think uh, I have actually looked at it at a more holistic point of view and chose to divest my stake on to Busan Malaysia. So I'm no longer a Busan Malaysia shareholder. Uh, and I hope that my analysis and my sharings actually uh, give a bit of insights on how you actually choose when to sell a share. So of course, uh, the similar approach can be used to analyze whether you can buy a share or not. Uh, I think we have a latest video on uh, ECMO holdings. You can check it out on the uh, right-hand side corner of this video. We'll put it in. And then of course, Jumping, anything you want to add on uh, on how you actually sell a company or when you should actually do it. Uh, because of the na nature of my work, usually I won't actually go for sh short-term trading uh, to prevent I spend a lot of time monitoring the markets. So usually we'll look into the fundamental. That's why like what happened to Busan Malaysia is kind of like the fundamental switch, even though they got somewhat monopolizing the whole things. But because of the limitations, uh, whatever thing that has been pointed out by Japan, I think this is one of the ways that you can actually choose to sell uh, your share because there is always a better one for you to go after. So, th so that's why I think one of the key things is to check out the fundamental and see whether uh, there's any switch. And then of course, secondly, also something that I've learned uh, recently is one of the moments that you, can, you should sell your share is when there is a very crazy bull market. Uh, even though the company you're holding on is very good, but then if, if you go to some ridiculous valuation like 300 to even 600 or even 1,000 returns, you should consider to actually take profits because it might be something actually happened behind the scene due to not logical support from all the retail investors. So this is the time for you to consider to actually sell the share as well. But of course, there are multiple other ways that you can look into it. We have a more structured way to actually look into all those things, uh, which is something that we have shared inside our Dividend Jam uh, course, which is also bundled into our Premium Club subscription. So if you're interested to find out more about our portfolio or location strategies, you can also join us uh, inside the Premium Club. It's a so-called annual subscription. Uh, we will actually share our thoughts and all those things uh, in a private Facebook group. And of course, on a yearly basis, we also share our stock pick and also some of the uh, different different team-based kind of sharing. For example, we used to share about EV, electric vehicles, we used to share about semiconductors, so on and so forth.
Yep. So I think that's it from today. Uh, do you agree with my analysis? Do you think that Busan Malaysia is uh, actually uh, a good dividend stock and I have actually made a mistake? Uh, let me know in your uh, your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Uh, but I hope that I have actually made my case and you can actually do so too if you uh, want to and increase your knowledge and, and, and learning experience with Kaya Plus. So check out our Kaya Plus Premium Club invitation in the caption and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.